This video was sponsored by HP. Mac OS Ventura is the next version of Apple's desktop operating system due out in the fall of 2022. It's a direct successor to 2021's Mac OS Monterey and brings with it several new features. In this video, I tell you about my top five favorites. Let's get started with improvements to messages. Just to get this one out of the way, one of the announcements people were most excited about at WWDC 2022 was the ability to edit messages, unsend messages, and mark message threads as unread in iOS 16. However, it's interesting because as Apple would announce features for one OS, like iOS or Mac OS, we would learn that those features would also be coming to the other operating systems as well. So even though these highly requested features were in the iOS section of the keynote, you will in fact be able to edit messages and unsend them on Mac OS Ventura. The caveat here is that you have 15 minutes after sending a message in order to edit or unsend it. And if you do, there will be a label letting the others in that message thread know that something was unsent or that the message that they are reading was edited from the original. Still, this is a great addition that brings messages more in line with the feature set of other popular messaging platforms. You can also use messages for collaborating on files and Safari tab groups. And even cooler, you can now start share play sessions within messages without the need to be on a FaceTime call. Next, let's talk about one of the coolest features I've ever seen announced for Mac OS, Continuity Camera. Continuity Camera in Mac OS lets you use your iPhone as a webcam and unlocks new features along with it, including one that was never possible on a webcam until now. Your Mac will automatically recognize and use the camera on your iPhone when it's nearby, and you don't even need to wake the iPhone or manually select it, and it works wired or wirelessly. When using continuity camera, you're able to use center stage, which will move the camera angle around as you move to keep you centered in the frame. You can also enable portrait mode to get that blurred background that you're used to on iPhones. And there's also a new studio light feature, which will basically make it look like you have soft light shining on your face while simultaneously dimming the background a bit making you stand out. You can mix and match any of these while using the feature. The most impressive thing about continuity camera though, is the ability to use the ultra wide camera on an iPhone to enable something called desk view. This will show both your face to whoever you're talking to, but also create a top down view of your desk. Now this is crazy because the iPhone is still pointed forward looking at your face. The iPhone's ultra wide camera also sees a forward view of you, but since it's ultra wide, it can also see your desk underneath. The processor in the iPhone compensates for the skewed view, and it basically looks like the iPhone is pointed downwards looking at your desk. I've tried it in the beta and it works and it's mind blowing to see. This is great for demonstrating things on your desk while talking like doing drawings or DIY projects. Next, let's talk about improvements in mail. I know a lot of people are going to appreciate the undo send feature, which will let you call back an email within 10 seconds of hitting the send button. It's a feature that's a big favorite in Gmail and will save people from those embarrassing typos they notice right after hitting send. And mail will even proactively tell you when it thinks you've forgotten to include an attachment. There's also a follow-up feature that will let you set a time for an email to come back to the top of your inbox so you can deal with it later. And there's a new scheduled send feature that allows you to specify exactly when an email should be sent out. So you can write your email at midnight, but have it scheduled to send out at eight in the morning, for example. Another major feature for me is the greatly enhanced search in mail. This was definitely needed. And now mail will use AI when searching to help you zone in on what you're looking for, even compensating for things like typos in your search and looking for synonyms as well. Next, Stage Manager got the most attention online by far, but before we talk about that, let me tell you about the new accessories 
from this video sponsor, HP. I've been testing them here on my Mac Studio, but they also work great on Windows as well. And in fact, when using them, you can even switch between the two different platforms on the fly. These are all about connectivity, customization, and sustainability, and they're all powered by the HP Accessory Center, which you can download free from the Microsoft Store or App Store. First, there's the HP 975 Dual Mode Wireless Keyboard. You can connect up to three devices to this one, two over Bluetooth and one using the included wireless dongle. It has a built-in rechargeable battery that delivers over six months of battery life and the backlit keys are smart enough to turn on based on the lighting conditions of the room, but it'll also turn on when you approach the keyboard and it's smart enough to turn off when not in use. The HP AC Accessory Sensor software allows deeper customization, letting you program over 20 different keys with shortcuts for your favorite apps and to make the backlight even more personalized. Then there's the HP 935 Creator Wireless Mouse. This one also connects to multiple devices and operating systems using the included dongle or Bluetooth and is also all about customization. You get seven programmable buttons on the Creator Wireless Mouse along with a fast and smooth scroll wheel. The mouse charges over USB-C and you get about three months of battery life on a single charge. And the fact that I only have to worry about charging the mouse about four times per year and the keyboard twice per year make these a no-brainer to me. I'll have links in the description if you want to pick any of these accessories up for yourself. And once again, big thank you to HP for sponsoring this video. Now, let's jump into Stage Manager. As I mentioned a minute ago, this definitely got a lot of attention online and it's a feature coming to both the Mac and the iPad. Stage Manager is enabled from the control center and will automatically organize your open windows on the left side of your screen while centering the one you're working in. And you can optionally hide that left-hand bar of apps until you move the mouse cursor to the left-hand side if you'd like. You can also group windows together to easily open more than one at a time. So if you're writing an email while referencing a window in Safari, you can do that while keeping all of your other windows out of the way. Most importantly, Stage Manager works together with other Mac OS windowing tools. So things like Mission Control and Spaces are still there if you wanna use them alongside Stage Manager or if you wanna continue using them while ignoring Stage Manager completely. Productivity wise, Stage Manager sounds like it can become a real game changer for multitasking and not having windows get lost in the sea of other open apps on your desktop. Next, let's talk about FaceTime Handoff. Handoff is a feature that lets you start something on one Apple device and then pick it up on another. So for example, if you're reading an article on your iPhone and then wanna continue reading it on your iPad, you can just hand off the article and it'll automatically open in Safari on your iPad right where you left off on your iPhone. Well, starting this fall, FaceTime gets added to the list of apps that support handoff. This means you'll be able to start a FaceTime call on your iPhone or iPad and then fluidly pass it over to your Mac running Ventura or vice versa. So if you're on an iPad in the kitchen making food while on FaceTime or you're out and about on your iPhone and then arrive home, you can walk over to your Mac and move the FaceTime session over without having to hang up and call the other person back. As with all recent versions of Mac OS, Ventura will be a free update for all compatible Macs and it'll be coming this fall just a few months away. Any questions? drop them in the comments below and I'll meet you there for further discussion. Thanks for watching as always guys. I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards and I will catch you in the next video.